Good evening. Welcome back to the Bow State Tour. Episode 63. And if you haven't yet, then please come and subscribe to my channel, Bison Studio Game. And, and notification bell if you want to be notified when the next Bow video is out. And leave a like if God uses to encourage you. Today we're looking at Leviticus chapter 22, and it is titled, well, this, this, this chapter, this, um, section begins in chapter 21, and it was, in, in the section in chapter 21 was titled, was titled this, so I'm going to say this, and it is titled, Holiness, and the priest. Alright. With all that being said, let's begin the reading of the scriptures. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, so that they abstain from holy things, of people Israel, which they dedicate to me, so that they do not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them, if any one of all your offspring, throughout your generations, approaches the holy things, the people of Israel dedicate to the Lord, while he has an uncleanness, that person shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. None of the offspring of Aaron has a leprous disease, or discharge may eat of the holy things until he is clean. Whoever touches anything that is unclean through contact with the dead or a man who has had a mission of semen, whoever touches a swarming thing by which you may you may be made clean, or by, by which he may be made unclean, or a person from whom he may take uncleanness, whatever his uncleanness may be, the person who touches such a thing shall be unclean until the evening, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he has bathed his body in water. When the sun goes down, he shall be clean, and afterward he may eat of the holy things, because they, they are his food. He shall not eat what dies of itself, or is torn by beasts, <laughs> and so make himself unclean by it. I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep my charge, lest they bear sin for it, and die thereby when they profane it. I am the Lord who sanctifies them. A lay person shall not eat of, the, of a holy thing. No foreign guest of the priest or higher worker shall eat of a holy thing. But if a priest buys a slave as his property for money, the slave may eat of it, and, and anyone born in his house may eat of it, may eat of his food. If a priest daughter marries a, a lay man, she, not, she shall not eat of the contribution of the holy things. But if a priest daughter is widowed or divorced, and has no child, and returns to her father's house, as in her youth, she may eat of her father's food. Yet no lay person shall eat of it. And if anyone eats of, eats of a holy thing, unintentionally, unintentionally, he shall add the fifth of its value to it and give the holy thing to the priest. They shall not profane the holy things of people of Israel, which they contribute to the Lord, and so cause them to bear iniquity and guilt by eating their holy things. From the Lord who sanctifies them. Alright, section two. Acceptable offerings. Now the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, and all people of Israel, and say to them, For any one of the house of Israel, or the sojourners in Israel, does a burnt offering as his offering, 
for any of their vows or free will offerings that they offer to them. For any of their vows or free will offerings that may, they may they that they offer to the Lord. If it is to be accepted for you, it shall be a male without blemish, or of the bulls, or the sheep, or the goats. You shall not offer anything that has a blemish, for it will not be acceptable to you, for you. And when anyone offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord, fulfill a vow, or a free will offering from, from the herd, or from the flock, to be accepted, it must be perfect. There should be no blemish in it. Animals blind or disabled or mutilated or having a discharge or an itch or scabs, you shall not offer to the Lord or give them to the Lord as his food, as a food offering on the altar. You, sh you may present a bull or a lamb that has a part too long or too short for a free will offering. But for a vow offering, it cannot be accepted. Any animal that has its testicles bruised, or crushed, or torn, or cut, you shall not offer to the Lord. You shall not, you shall not do it within your land. Neither shall you offer as the bread of your, of your God any such animals gotten from a foreigner, since there is a blemish in them, because they are mutilation. They will not be accepted for you. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When an ox or sheep or goat is born, it shall remain seven days with its mother. And from the eighth day on, it shall be acceptable as a food offering to the Lord. But you shall not kill an ox or a sheep and her young one day. And when you sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, you shall sacrifice it, so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten on the same day. You shall leave none of it until morning. I am the Lord. So you shall keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. And shall not proclaim my holy name, that I may be sanctified among the people of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you, who brought you out of the way of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. You know, that's Leviticus chapter chapter 22 verses 1 through 33 alright um, now we should move on to the explanations starting with explanation starting with explanation verses 1 through 9 <clears throat> Aaron and his sons and the generations follow, we're not allowed to touch the holy offerings of the people of Israel while being unclean. So they wouldn't dishonor God's name. Otherwise, they'd be banished from God's presence. If the priest was unclean, they would have to wait until sunset and wash his body. After this, he would be clean and, and, eat, the holy thing, and eat the holy offerings. Because they didn't keep this charge, they would die. Physical uncleanness represents the spiritual uncleanness of sin. It would be a great disrespect and insult in God's holy name if the priests tainted all the offerings given to God with their uncleanness. Our simple uncleanness is what cuts, cuts us off from God's presence and keeps us from a relationship with Him. Sin only leads to death and hell which is eternal separation from God. Thankfully, Jesus cleansed us of all sin and ended our separation from God. The priest washing his body symbolizes the daily confession of our sin. All right, we're going to explanation verses 10 through 16. Only the high priest family eat the holy offerings from the Israelites. Nobody else was allowed. If the priest brought a slave, the slave ate the offerings. And anyone born in his house, if the priest's daughter married a man who was not a priest or a Levite, 
that shall be forbidden from eating the offerings. However, if she was a widow or divorced and had no children, she could eat the holy offerings. So if anyone eats the holy offering accidentally, they shall add the fifth of its value and give it to the priest. They had to treat the holy offerings of the Israelites with respect and had to avoid causing the people to sin. The holy offerings could only be eaten by the priest's family. The holy offerings from the Holy offerings for the Israelites were the priest's wages for their service to God. They were offered to the Lord, so they had to be treated as sacred. If these offerings were defiled in any way, it would cause the Israelite to sin and be guilty because it would not be accepted. And God would be dishonored by it. A defiled offering would also be the greatest respect desired to God. The penalty for eating a holy offering accidentally was paying fifth of the offering's value to the priest and returning the offering to the priest. All right, now, should we move on to the explanation verses 17 through 25. When, 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 the, Israel, when the Israelites or any foreigner living among them brought an offering, the animals had to be male, livestock, without blemish. No offering sacrifice could be offered if it had a defect or of any kind. The offering had to be perfect, without blemish, without blemishes. The animal that could not be offered were blind, disabled, mutilated, had discharge, a skin disease, or scabs. They could offer an animal with an unusually long or short limb for a free will offering, but could not be accepted for a vow offering. Animals with damaged testicles were not allowed to be offered. Our animals brought, bought from foreigners who, who, who mutilated them were not allowed to be offered. Animals having a disease or a disorder was a result of the curse of sin at the fall. These animals were not allowed to be offered because it would be offensive to God. In order to atone for the person's sin, the offering would be perfect. The only case in which a disorderly animal could be offered was in the case of a free will offering for unusually long or short limbs. Any uncleanness, disease, or disorder present in sin and the results of it. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice without disease, disorder, or sin. He was the only one who met the qualifications to atone for the world's sin. An imperfect person cannot atone for their own sins because they were already tainted by sin. Only Jesus, the God man, can atone for the world's sin, because he's perfect. When an livestock gave birth, the animal had turned, oh, I mean, now, should we learn the final explanation of verses 26 to 33. When an livestock gave birth, the animal had turned man with its mother for a week. Then on the eighth day, the animal could be offered as a food offering to the Lord. They were not allowed to kill the animal on the day of birth and, and the parent animal. When the Israelites offered offering thanksgiving to the Lord, it had to be eaten on the same day for it to be accepted. The Israelites had to obey God's commands and could not profane his holy name. They may be honored by the people. God is the one who sacrificed them. God is the one who sang about his flights and brought them out of Egypt to be their God. All of these commands had to be honored by the Israelites, otherwise they would be dishonoring God. I think the reason for the Israelites having to eat the Thanksgiving offering is because giving thanks to God should be a daily thing for so the or so the food wouldn't be unclean due to spoiling. As Christians, we are called to obey God's commands so we can show our love and honor and love and honor God as holy. We, I mean, and honor Him as holy. We are only made holy by God's Spirit. He makes us more like Jesus every day. 
is going to happen if we ask God in prayer daily to live through us, help us through, come more like Him. We are only made holy by God's holiness. The acceptable offerings that God wants from believers are obedience, commitment, commitment, thanksgiving, praise, honor, and trust. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. I really appreciate you guys listening. And remember to comment and subscribe and leave a like if God uses to encourage you. And I would really appreciate it if you left a comment. Tell me what you thought what you thought of the video. Or or if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. Um well, all that being well, it being said, thank you, thank you, and all glory to Christ Jesus Lord. He deserves it all. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. The next chapter is going to be on, the next study is going to be on Leviticus chapter 24. All right. Good night, and God bless.